Hello everybody, we are today coming to you from New York, Goshen, New York. We are with Patillo Companies. They are out of New Jersey, but we are at one of their big site projects here. We spent the night in Newburgh. We're going to end up today in New York City, so we thought, why not come and see what the heck Patillo's got going. I was out here a few months ago when it was absolutely freezing miserable at another one of their projects in Newburgh. We have a vlog on it if you haven't seen it. My hands are so cold. This is their newest site development project. It's a smaller project, smaller. So I think, do you know, remember how many yards he said? It was like 300. 300, 200, and 200 rocks. So about 300,000 yards on this project, 200,000 of it is rock. So you have the three drills up there drilling. They're shooting pretty regularly. And then you have a lot of this dirt material that the 395 is on right now. Again, it's not just about pushing dirt and moving dirt, you're building a job. So you have to build a building pad and the surrounding infrastructure for whatever commercial building's going here. They have on this site as well, like a lot of commercial sites, they're crushing on site. The product that they need is not too complicated. So they just have a basic um, jaw crusher with a screen deck to create two different products. One of the products is a more coarse rock to form the sub base for the actual building and the roads and whatever infrastructure is going around the building. And then they have a finer material, that's the backfill for the retaining walls that they'll be building here in a little bit. They've only been here a few weeks so this project's still getting a little broken in, but because it's a few hundred thousand yards, because they have such big equipment, because they move so quickly, this, this will be blown out by, I don't know, uh, four, or five, six weeks. They should be wrapping up here and the building guys can come in and knock it out from there. Patillo, it's an amazing company. They come in, they do their job, they leave. They're really, really proud of what they do because they move fast. They do phenomenal work. They go on to the next one. So to one of the contractors that admits, hey, we're not going to be the cheapest every time, but we do exactly what we say we're going to do, and we can do it a hell of a lot faster than most other folks out there. So love visiting these guys. Let's go see what they got going.
So it's not always gravy material you're moving. It's not always nice dirt. It's not always clean shot rock. They're shooting this material. But what happens is because it's a combination of dirt and slate and rock, it's just a mess. That energy can't go where it needs to go to properly fracture the rock. So what happens is you get this chunky mix of material that you need to work through as you dig it. So he's doing his best. He's loading real quick once he gets into the dirt, but there's also all these big boulders he has to pick through, cast aside, and then they're taking all those boulders over to a pile where they'll peck through them with the hammer and then they'll feed them into the crusher to make stone out of them. So it's not extremely productive, but you just have to work with whatever geological conditions you have on the site you're on. So before you can obviously load the rock with explosives, you have to drill. The two different factors that affect how this rock's gonna be fractured before explosives come into place is the pattern, spacing, and so that's how far the holes are from one another, and then the actual size of the hole, the diameter of the hole. On a job like this, a commercial job, you're gonna be working with a smaller hole, and you can see right behind me, the pattern's pretty tight. It looks like a 10 by 10 pattern or something within that ballpark. So it's nice and tight. And each one of these little piles of drill cuttings is a hole that's eventually gonna get loaded with explosives, which is what we're gonna go check out next. So now that they've drilled it all out, they're ready to shoot this section of, of rock. To shoot it, you need three ingredients. You need your blasting cap, your really high explosive. You need your booster, your high explosive that sets off the remainder of the energy. And then you need your AMFO, your ammonium nitrate fuel oil. So this is your booster, Eagle 340. So this is about I don't know, probably about a half pound of high explosives. That goes, this cap right here goes inside of the booster. So you can see this is the blasting cap right here, there's the high explosives. Goes into the booster, and you can get footage of them lowering it down into the hole. Then they'll tie it off, and this yellow cord here, this is the deck cord, this is what ties all of the holes together. So it all goes to one point, and you can set it off from there. The last part is this right here, and this is the delay. So a good blast is timed out. You don't just set off all the holes at once. There's actually a, a very, very, very small delay so that the holes will typically go off in rows, and that allows the energy to move through the face, which helps to fracture the rock a lot more effectively. If you didn't do that, you wouldn't be relieving the pressure, so you wouldn't get the fragmentation you're after. You wanna relieve the pressure through the face so the, the, you'll probably time it. There's, there's a drop off right behind us. The holes furthest back are probably gonna be the ones to go first and they'll shoot it that way. So they'll shoot, 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 shoot all the way back using these little delays to get the timing just right. And then once the explosives in the hole, you come in here with your little skid steer and your fine gravel and you'll shovel it into the hole to, to stem it. So you'll put the rock all the way back up, fill the entire hole with rock so that the energy stays within the rock when the explosive goes off. So he'll, once the, uh, the booster and everything is in the hole, he'll come in here with that tape and weight and he'll be measuring how much info they're putting into the hole. And so they'll be working off of a depth to give them, they'll, they'll do the math and based on the depth, the hole size, they can determine how much ANFO is in that hole. So each hole will be filled with the same amount of ANFO in theory. And then once he's determined he's at depth, okay, we're good. The guys come in here with the stemming rock and fill it all the way up to grade. So ammonium nitrate fuel oil, all it basically is is fertilizer, ammonium nitrate, and diesel fuel mixed together. It's called Purell. Purell is, is kind of a, a nickname for it. And that's the primary explosive 
that's what does the work to really fracture the rock. So these smaller explosives, the boosters, the, the caps, that's all really dedicated just to set off the primary explosive. This is what does the work. It's really nice that they have a bulk truck here. They can fill these holes a hell of a lot quicker. Typically, when I was doing it at least, it was 50 pound bags of Ampo. So you'd have to use paper bags to fill everything up. Whereas you can just use this truck, fills it up within a few seconds, just go hole the hole the hole the hole the hole. So for the drilling, we saw the drill with almost a finished pattern up there. This is the next pattern they're gonna start drilling out. They actually just drove up a drill right behind me there. So they lay it out by basically coming in here with GPS. So they'll come in with a, a, a rod and we'll mark out. I confirmed it's not a 10 by 10, it's a nine by nine pattern. So they'll confirm exactly where the drill holes need to be. And then they'll use spray paint and a rock to mark for the drill where it should be and then they'll come back through and confirm everything spot on before they load the shot. A big component to any site work project is drainage. So you, you have, you're basically building this enormous pad of all of this square footage that when it rains, that water that collects on that pad needs to go somewhere. So in the surrounding areas, you'll build up drainage and, and retention ponds. So you'll take all of that water, you'll drain it and grade everything to drain away from the building so the building doesn't flood, and then it all needs to collect somewhere. And every state has different parameters as far as how you need to collect storm water, but here in New York, you'll have to collect it in ponds just on the outside of the property. And this is the very edge of the property. The building corner is actually just right there, about 30, 40 feet from me. So this is the outer edge of the property. All of the water will be draining to here and some of the other ponds on site so that the, when it rains, the building will be high and dry and the water won't be flooding their neighbors. It'll stay on site. And of course, they put a 390 in another retention pond because why not? All right, everybody, that is uh, our time with Patillo out here in New York. As you can see, I'm sitting in the 395. Cat's here to adjust the GPS a little bit. So obviously we took advantage of the opportunity for a nice scenic background for this outro. Thanks for checking us out. Check out Patillo, unbelievable company. And now we're headed to the city. Wish us luck. Thanks for tuning in. Stay dirty, everybody.